Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell, and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. The Prime Minister continues on the Jungle Raj theme in Bihar, claims Lalu will remote control the administration if in power. The Election Commission urges leaders to restrain from name calling during campaigns. Outrage across the country over reports of a Chennai woman's hand being chopped off by an employer in Saudi Arabia. The government demands stern action against the accused. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announces the dismissal of his cabinet minister at a press conference. Food and Environment Minister Asim Ahmad Khan had allegedly taken a bribe of 6 lakh rupees. Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet has awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. The group was chosen from 273 nominations for helping the nation's peaceful transition to democracy. And Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis eye yet another title this year as they reach the final of the China Open. The top story this evening, continuing from where he left off on Thursday, the Prime Minister today lashed out at the Grand Alliance and called for a change in government in Bihar. After a hectic Thursday where he addressed four rallies, Prime Minister Modi addressed two rallies in Sasaram and Aurangabad today. Here's a detailed report. <laughs> Scaling up his Jungle Raj pitch, Prime Minister Narendra Modi warned that RJD chief Lalu Prasad Yadav will remote control the affairs in the state if the Grand Alliance came to power in Bihar. There are Bihar ke log itna to puchye ke Lalu ji is bar chunao ke bahar kyo hai. Remote control se Bihar ko chalana chate. Wo kate hai. Mai big boss hu big boss. Addressing a rally in Sasaram, the constituency of Dalit leader late Jagjeevan Ram, he also trained his guns on Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar for getting Jeetan Ram Manji removed as the Chief Minister of the state and accused him of backstabbing Dalits. Manji, who now heads Hindustan Awam Morcha Secular, is an NDA ally, was also on the stage when Modi attacked Nitish on the issue of Dalits. Modi also targeted all the three parties of the alliance, JDU, RJD and the Congress, on the issue of governance, asking as to what development they carried out in the last 60 years when they ruled the state. BJP has been targeting the Grand Alliance, saying with Lalu being a part of it, there will be Jungle Raj 2 in Bihar if the combined came to power. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, the Election Commission has expressed anguish at some of the speeches during the campaigns for the Bihar Assembly polls. In fact, the Election Commission said such speeches are aimed at causing mutual hatred and urge politicians to show restraint. The panel's reaction comes amid politicians using rallies to target each other viciously ahead of the elections. On Friday, the RJD moved the Election Commission against Prime Minister Narendra Modi for his remarks against party chief Lalu Prasad. On Thursday, Modi took on Lalu Prasad at a rally in Munger, accusing the former Bihar chief minister of targeting him through controversial remarks. Lalu also slammed Modi, blaming him for using disparaging and insulting language against him and the Yadav caste. The RGD complaint uh, said the remarks ca coming from none other than the Prime Minister disturbed the political atmosphere and the idea of free elections. They urged the poll panel not to allow him to address further rallies. Prime Minister Ji ne jis tarah ki bhasha ka kal istemal kiya, wo sirf Lalu Prasad Ji ke liye hi nahi, sab logon ke liye. Prime Minister ke pad ki garima ke anurup nahi hai. Hamne election commission se darkhast ki ki unki aane wali rallyon par na sirf उनके पर रोक लगाया जाए बल्कि उन पर समुचित कार्रवाई की जाए और हमने कहा कि ना सिर्फ यह मॉडल कोड दो और तीन जनरल कंडक्ट का वायलेशन है बल्कि 153 
जो पब्लिक पीस को थ्रेट करने की कोशिश करता है इंडियन पीनल कोड का उसकी धारा का भी वायलेशन है let's go across to patna from where we're joined by sanjeev varma news coordinator of the telegraph to help us understand sanjeev now this was uh, along expected lines as uh, the poll days draw closer the rhetoric certainly getting sharper but uh, in terms of uh, the election commission's caution uh, is it uh, going to pay uh, any are any leaders going to pay any heed because it's an all uh, it's an uh, it's, they're going out for all out battle right now Uh, you see, it has been a cerebral right from the beginning. Uh, leaders attacking each other, using all kind of languages against each other during the course of election. It started more than a week back. Uh, it started uh, from all the political parties. No one can be single singled out. That uh, it is happening from bo- both sides. Uh, when it comes to the prime minister. what he was quoting he was quoting uh, some news reports and what uh, lalu ji had said earlier and he didn't call lalu prashad a shaitan if right. you go through the speech you will find he he, he said that uh, a devil has chosen lalu to uh, as a host right. so we should not look uh, towards a person who who is hosting a devil he didn't call lalu a devil so going by that logic prime minister per se literally speaking didn't use any offensive word against lalu prashad all right on the other hand lalu ji this morning did use uh, he called uh, the prime minister uh, brahm pisach which literally means a poltergeist all a right. ghost which makes a lot of noise so uh, even uh, if you go through the tweets of sushil modi the bjp leader mm. he now it is getting personal he he has uh, said that lalu has a machine operated All right, so heart. but why is this so, happening sanjeev is know, this is this even a, medical elements are coming to play right i, I, I just want know to know why is this happening this because stopped. is it uh, because uh, i mean it's really neck and neck and uh, it could come down to really a, a slight change in uh, just a uh, voter perception that could be the difference uh, between the grand alliance and uh, the nda at this juncture and also uh, there are a lot of other antics that are being uh, at play the references uh, to caste uh, that are invoked every time uh, certainly is uh, show how big uh, an issue caste is uh, in this campaign right now uh, more than neck and neck i would say that voters in bihar have kept the leaders guessing neck and neck may be there in the survey but if you hit the ground you speak to voters no one is easily opening up uh, there are turnouts in the meetings public meetings no doubts but no one can claim that this vote is coming to me mm. as far as the caste factor is concerned of course it will play a role in bihar elections i am not denying that but one has to look at the composition of bihar voters right from day 1 i have been telling you that more than 3 crore voters out of 6.68 crore voters in bihar are less than 40 years of age right and they um, these young voters i don't know how much of, um, they would be guided by caste only because mm. they have their own aspirations they want many things mm. and past 10 years of nitish kumar so many good things have happened in bihar so people here too have become aspirational it is very natural all right so is so, that what is happening my uh, final question to you is that for. why the prime minister is perhaps targeting lalu prasad more and saying that uh, given uh, if uh, we vote for the grand alliance it means lalu prasad that it means lack of development and could this backfire for the grand alliance uh, there is a method in that reason being uh, if you see the past 25 years 15 years of lalu rabri regime and 10 years of nitis development did take place during nitis's regime the blame on nitis uh, which the nda is uh, labeling it is that is about his alliance with lalu prashad and congress but no one is questioning his development card but for few points uh, like power and all but still nitish has improved and on that front all right as far as bihar is concerned but if you if you take the lalu rabri regime development was missing mm. so they are targeting him it is but natural another point lalu is a convicted person in a fraud scam case mm. it is a corruption case so it is easier to target lalu than nitish mm. 
All right, we'll have to leave it over there because uh, we're going to have this conversation even more often uh, as the poll dates draw closer and uh, the campaign rhetoric certainly keeps getting shriller every day. Sanjeev Varma, thanks very much for coming in and helping us understand uh, what's going on in Bihar as of now. Well, moving on now, India strongly reacted against Saudi Arabia after a brutal attack on a woman who was employed as a domestic help. Currently, the victim, a resident of Chennai, is recovering in a hospital in Riyadh. India has asked for strong action against her employers. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj expressing India's outrage over a Saudi Arabia resident chopping off an Indian woman's hand. The victim, who worked as a domestic help, had tried to escape from her employers a week before. India lodged a strong protest and asked Saudi authorities to take strict action. We had raised the issue on the 7th of October itself with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and asked for strict action in the matter and severe punishment for the sponsor. Separately, mission officials have met the chief as well as the investigating officer of the police station and have requested that Mrs. Muni Ratnam's statement be recorded without further delay. An independent probe be undertaken on the incident and a case of attempted murder lodged against the sponsor. हमारे काफी लोग जो बाहर जाते हैं वो कुछ बहकावे के अंदर चले जाते हैं उनको पता नहीं वहां पे क्या करना है क्या नहीं करना क्या रूल है क्या रूल नहीं है और इसीलिए हम हमेशा कहते हैं कि आप जो रिकॉग्नाइज एजेंट्स हैं रिक्रूटिंग एजेंट उन्हीं के माध्यम से जाएं Wellwood resident Kasturi Muniratnam was working in Riyadh as a domestic help since July like many others she had gone to Saudi Arabia through an agent who promised a monthly wage of 80000 rupees to take care of an old woman but after starting work she told her family about the alleged torture velikaga agency moolama ponanga poi 3 months da agudhu avanga vandu 1 month varaikum edhume avangalukku endha problem illa adukapra dhan prachana pol irukudhu avanga magangatta avanga phone panni solli pesirukanga indha mari enakku kashtama irukku bayama irukku inga vela paakkuradhukku moli theriyala edhum illa na vandren appdin solli pesirukanga muni ratnam is currently recovering in a saudi hospital Her family has sought financial help from the Tamil Nadu government. Thousands of Indians travel to Arab countries every year to work as domestic help and laborers. Most of them end up being cheated by fake agents and human traffickers. Piro report Rajya Sabha TV. Now, Nitish Katara's killers Vikas and Vishal Yadav have been spared the death penalty. The Supreme Court had ruled that the 2002 murder was not an honor killing and so it could not be included in the rarest of rare categories. Vikas and Vishal Yadav were serving a 30-year sentence for Katara's murder. Nitish Katara's mother, Neelam Katara, had moved the Supreme Court seeking the death penalty for them. She'd argued that the murder was an honor killing. Uh, bench of Justices, uh, Justices Jagdish Singh Kherkar and uh, R. Banumati said that while it was a murder and could even be premeditated, it certainly was not heinous nor a matter of honor killing. with all uh, due respect to the honorable supreme court because i have felt that they have always looked after my interests and i have full faith in the judiciary of this country but so maybe some way we could not present our facts as well as uh, they needed to be presented and there are some uh, lacunas left uh, the supreme court of course has said that it is not a heinous crime it's like any other crime i uh, i mean I, there is nothing i can say in that my counsel will take it up later on i am truly disappointed is about the honor killing issue because i know that the legislature in this country will not bring out a law on honor killing or honor crimes time now to take a look here at our other new updates from across the country nationwide violence marred the first phase of panchayat polls in uttar pradesh with six persons getting injured in separate incidents of firing and brick batting The presiding officer's of polling station was also manhandled. The Supreme Court today expressed satisfaction over the CBI probe into the Vyapam scam after lawyer Kapil Sibal alleged no arrests were made in any of them. The CBI had last month conducted raids in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh in connection with its probe. The Apex Court will hear the matter again on the 23rd of October. The Supreme Court today indicated that it will pronounce its order on Monday on a plea with sought levy of environment pollution compensatory charges on commercial vehicles entering Delhi. The court directed the government of neighboring states including Haryana, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh to fall in line and also asked the respective chief secretaries to coordinate with the Delhi government.
Time for a very quick break. On the other side, Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis eye yet another title this year as they reach the final of the China Open. All that and more on the other side. It has become more relevant to India to use this technology, microbial leaching of metals from ores, because we have already depleted our rich mineral reserves. I realized that actually microbes, many microbes produce nanoparticles, but only we didn't say, we didn't know that they should be called as nanoparticles. And that's how we actually develop a technology, which is again a microbial technology for extracting arsenic from water. Watch Eureka with Dr. Parknikar, Director, Agarkar Research Institute on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back, you're watching the news tonight. The Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival sacked his Food and Civil Supplies Minister Asim Ahmed Khan for alleged corruption. At a press conference in Delhi today, K. Jival asked for a CBI inquiry over allegations that Asim Khan took a bribe of 6 lakh rupees from a builder. Khan has been replaced by Imran Hussain. This is the second major change in the Ahmadmi Party government since uh, it took charge in February this year. In June, Law Minister Jitender Tomar resigned after he was accused of faking his college degree. Kejriwal emphasized that he decided to act against a corrupt minister without any prompting. However, Kejriwal's political rivals took a dig, claiming several members in the Ahmadi Party cabinet face corruption charges. Our cabinet minister, Asim Sahab, has a very complaint against the Bhrashtachar. We are referring to the CBI this complaint. And Imran Sahab, उनकी जगह नया मंत्री रखने जा रहे हैं भ्रष्टाचार से कोई समझौता नहीं हो सकता और यही संदेश हम सारी दिल्ली के पूरे दिल्ली एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को देना चाहते हैं सभी मंत्रियों को सभी एमएलएस को सभी अफसरों को देना चाहते हैं पार्टी विच वाज फॉर्म टू फाइट करप्शन वन थर्ड ऑफ हिज मिनिस्टर्स इन लेस देन एट मंथ हैव बीन कॉट ऑन करप्शन एंड हैव बीन रिमूव है so instead of taking high moral grounds, I didn't see even a single trace of remorse or apology on the face of Arvind Kejriwal. In a very short span of time of Mr. Arvind Kejriwal's rule in Delhi, we have seen all kinds of charges against ministers in the cabinet. And in fact, ministers of cabinet have been sacked number of times within this short span of time. It shows that those who had come to give alternative form of governance, in fact, are embroiled in corruption, domestic violence and charges which are quite heinous. The Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi is on a two-day visit to Karnataka. Soon after his arrival at the Bengaluru airport, Rahul left for Mandya to meet families of farmers who committed suicide in the district. In the last six months, the district, known as the Sugarcane Belt, has seen 56 suicides. The number is the highest in the state, which has seen 541 farmer deaths in recent months. Rahul also visited the family of the farmer who committed suicide just hours before his visited, visit over there. In fact, later he held an interaction with a group of progressive farmers and students at the Zonal Agricultural Research Centre. After the meet, Rahul attacked the centre for being insensitive towards the plight of farmers in the country. The central government does not seem to think agriculture or the Kisan is important. Uh, whether it's the issue of MSP, whether it's the issue of Ola or bad weather, crops being destroyed as a result of weather, the government does not seem to have a strategy, does not seem to give priority to the Kisan. And this is a very unfortunate thing. Uh, farmers are committing suicide in large numbers. Uh, the central government needs to do something about it and the Prime Minister needs to take a look at this and help the Kisan of this country. Now, after four days of uproar, proceedings returned to normal in the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly today. But unruly scenes were witnessed outside the Assembly building. Independent MLA Engineer Rashid, who was thrashed by a few BJP MLAs on Thursday for reportedly hosting a beef party, held a sit-in protest outside the Assembly. He, along with the supporters, protested uh, the alleged sabotage of the beef bill as it was not taken up for discussion in the Assembly on Thursday. They were later detained by the police in charges of gherawing the Assembly. 
वो बिले तो अब लैपस हो जाएंगी वो तो इन्होंने उसको उनके कफन दफन का पहले ही इंतजाम किया हुआ है फिर मुफ्ती साहब कहेंगे टाइम नहीं था इनसे यह कह दीजिए कि बिल को उठा लें पूरी रियासत के लोग चाहते हैं कि आज असम्बली कानून पास करे ताकि ये पता चले कि जो ये बीफ है ये हलाल चीज है दुनिया की कोई ताकत कहे हम उसकी सुबह तक उसको हराम करा नहीं अवार्ड विनिंग नॉवलिस्ट शशि देश पांडे टुडे रिजाइन फ्रॉम द साहित्य अकादमीज गवर्निंग काउंसिल शी सेट हर डिसीजन टू क्विट इज इन प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द लिटरेरी बॉडी साइलेंस इन द मर्डर ऑफ रैशनलिस्ट प्रोफेसर एम एम खालबुर्गी अ लेफ्ट आइडियोलॉग इन फॉर्म ऑफ वाइस चांसलर ऑफ द हम्पी यूनिवर्सिटी खालबुर्गी वॉज शॉर्ट डेट आउट साइड हाउस इन धारवाल सिटी ऑफ कर्नाटक एंड ऑगस्ट इन हर रेजिग्नेशन लेटर टू द अकादमी चेयरपर्सन देश पांडे सेट साइलेंस इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ अ बैटमेंट शी ऑल्सो एक्सप्रेस होप दैट द लिटरेरी बॉडी विल गो बियॉन्ड ऑर्गेनाइजिंग प्रोग्राम्स एंड गिविंग प्राइजेज And turned away by the Shiv Sena in Mumbai, Pakistani singer Gulam Ali will perform in Delhi now. The Kejriwal government decided to host the singer after his show scheduled for today was cancelled. However, political rhetoric though continues on whether India should encourage cultural engagements with Pakistan at a time of increased ceasefire violations and terror attacks. On Thursday, Delhi's culture minister Kapil Mishra had extended an invitation to legendary singer Gulam Ali to come and perform in the national capital. On Friday, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal announced that his government will host the singer sometime in December. The West Bengal government has also expressed keenness to host Gulam Ali in Kolkata, but no date has been finalized for that yet. प्यार भरी मोहब्बत भरी मुलाकात थी उनको दिल्ली में बुलाने के लिए अरविंद केजरीवाल जी ने फोन पर उनसे चर्चा की है और दिल्ली में कार्यक्रम करेंगे वो दिसंबर में कर सकते हैं प्रोग्राम और अगर अगले महीने भी उनके कुछ कार्यक्रम दिल्ली में होते हैं जो पहले से फिक्स थे तो उसमें भी हम सब लोग जाएंगे और सुनेंगे उनको उन्होंने फरमाया कि आपको दिल्ली भी प्रोग्राम करना पड़ेगा इन शिसंबर के महीने में मैंने उनसे बोला है अर्ज किया है कि इन आपने याद किया तो मैं दिसंबर में जरूर Two of Gulam Ali's scheduled concerts in Mumbai and Pune were cancelled after protests by the Shiv Sena. The party said such concerts could not be allowed at a time when tensions remain high at the Indo-Pak border. Despite the BJP's efforts, its ruling partner in Maharashtra remained firm on its stand to cancel the shows. Gulam Ali hamara koi vyakti ka dushman nahi hai. Shiv Sena desh bhavna ke sath judi hai. Ye desh ki bhavna hai. अगर केजरीवाल जी और ममता जी को देश की भावना नहीं समझते तो मुझे लगता है कि देश का देश का दुर्भाग्य है कभी भी महाराष्ट्र की सरकार ने नहीं कहा कि हम गुलाम मलिक साहब के प्रोग्राम को नहीं होने देंगे बल्कि महाराष्ट्र की सरकार ने पूरी तरह से कहा कि हम पूरी सुरक्षा देंगे अब आयोजकों ने उसको ख, किसी कुछ लोगों ने अगर जो है वो उस पर आरोप लगा दिया कुछ लोगों ने उस पर जो है वो कह दिया नहीं होने देंगे और आयोजकों ने होने से मना कर दिया तो उनकी समस्या है लेकिन जहां तक सवाल है हम कभी भी सुर और संगीत पर सियासत को न स्वीकार करते हैं न हम मानते हैं कि सुर और संगीत पर सियासत होनी चाहिए द शिव सेना स्टैंड ड्रू फ्लैग नॉट ओनली फ्रॉम राइवल पोलिटिकल पार्टीज बट फ्रॉम बॉलीवुड वेटरन इज वेल अर्लियर पाकिस्तानी हाई कमिश्नर अब्दुल बासित हर एक्सप्रेस डिस अपॉइंटमेंट ओवर द इशू कॉलिंग इट अ सेट बैक फॉर कल्चरल टाइज ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Now, veteran music director and lyricist Ravindra Jain passed away today at a hospital in Mumbai due to multiple organ failure. The musician overcame blindness to become one of the most successful composers of the 70s era. We leave you into a short, lead, lead you into a short break with some melodious numbers of his. The pole juggernaut rolls out in Bihar. Modi's NDA takes on Nitish's Grand Alliance. Who will win this most important election battle since 2014? Watch Verdict 2015 Monday through Saturday on Rajya Sabha Television.
Welcome back. back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, the Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet has been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for its role in helping the country's transition to democracy. The group of four was chosen from a whopping 273 nominations, which included names like Pope Francis, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Iran nuclear deal negotiators. The 2011 Arab Spring that began in Tunisia brought down the government of longtime dictator Zine Ben Ali, but uh, the country fell into crisis in the years that followed. The Nobel Committee said the quartet had made a decisive contribution to the building of a pluralistic democracy in Tunisia at a time of political assassinations and widespread social unrest. The quartet was formed in summer of 2013 when the democratization process was in danger of collapsing as a result of political assassinations and widespread social unrest. It established an alternative, peaceful political process at a time when the country was on the brink of civil war. It was thus instrumental in enabling Tunisia in the space of a few years to establish a constitutional system of government guaranteeing fundamental rights for the entire population, irrespective of gender, political conviction or religious belief. In an attempt to control the migrant crisis, the European Union nations have agreed to speed up the deportation of failed asylum seekers. They also discussed on creating a border guard force to cope with a surge in refugees, especially from war torn Syria. Meanwhile, the EU foreign policy chief expressed hope as the Balkan countries also showed a new political will to tackle the crisis. The European Union have endorsed a dedicated program to step up deportation of illegal migrants. It has been decided that the economic migrants, who are largely from poor African nations, will be sent back, while refugees from conflict zones will be excluded. EU will also create a border force to check the inflow of migrants. Die Europäische Kommission wird in den nächsten Monaten einen permanenten Verteilungsmechanismus in Vorschlag bringen, in der Hoffnung, dass die, Reg die Regierungen Europas darauf schneller reagieren, als, auf die, als sie auf die ursprünglichen Vorschläge der Kommission, die wir im Mai gemacht äh, hatten, reagiert. To allocate an additional 500 million euros in particular for humanitarian assistance for this crisis for refugees and IDP people. After the talks, the EU foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini said that there is a new political will among the Balkan states to tackle the migrant crisis. Meanwhile, the V4 group, which includes Poland, the Czech Republic, Hungary and Slovakia, met the Croatian president in Hungary to discuss aid for migrants passing through their countries. The first move for EU quota system for sharing 1,60,000 refugees have been mobilized. 20 Eritreans have been flown from Rome to Sweden under the scheme. The UN welcomed 43,000 resettlement opportunities offered recently. Resettlement has been one of our key objectives. In the last few weeks, we had 43,000 new resettlement opportunities, most of them for Syrians. A policy document has also been approved by the EU. It calls on all states to ensure that those migrants ordered to leave should actually go. During the last year, over 4 lakh expulsion orders were made, but fewer than 40% of them were enforced. The International Organization for Migration has said that there is a surge in the number of migrants arriving on the Greek islands near Turkey. Nearly 7,000 per day in the past week, compared to the average 4,500 a day so far. Euro Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for all the sports action and sports speed. The Indo-Swiss tennis combine of Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis reached the finals of the China Open. The duo defeated Chinese pair of Chen Liang and Wafan uh, Wang 6-2, 6-3 in straight sets. The pair will next face the winners of the match between Casey Delacroix uh, and uh, uh, Chan and Chan in the other semi-final. Indian men's hockey team defeated New Zealand 3-2 in the third test match to take an unassailable 2-1 lead in the four-match test series. For India, Dharamveer Singh, Rupinder Pal Singh and Ramandeep Singh scored a goal each. India lost the opening match but won the second game 3-1 at Nelson on Wednesday. Chile registered their first win over Brazil in 15 years after beating Brazil 2-0 in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers. 
Eduardo Vargas earned the first goal for the hosts in the 72nd minute. Later, Arsenal stars Alexis Sanchez scored a goal in the 90th minute to seal victory for his team. Argentina suffered a shock 2-0 defeat to Ecuador in the opening round of South America's 2018 World Cup qualifying tournament. Frickson Irazo headed a goal in the 81st minute to give Ecuador a shock lead. A minute later, Antonio Valencia scored, uh, consolidated the win for Ecuador in a match that looked to be heading for a goalless draw. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.